Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exalt Gastrology. Today we have a very interesting topic. This is from a movie which has been released in India recently. Uh, I think the name is The Kerala Story. <laughs> so there are certain uh, points which have been raised in the movie which requires attention. And many people have asked me uh, regarding this, uh, they've asked me, how does this actually work? Okay, so there are many points about the Vedic tradition, about Hinduism, which uh, the movie mentions, uh, which is supposedly <clears throat> spoken by people from other religions. Okay, um, so what, what what is it? So, uh, for example, uh, there's one thing, there are, many, there are many things, but one of them is like, uh, they've said, you know, oh, how can Lord Shiva be God? Because he... He was, you know, um, crying and uh, he was weeping when his wife, uh, Sati, apparently when she died. And um, how, how can God uh, succumb to emotions, right? Because God should be beyond emotions, actually. Otherwise, how can uh, this person be God, right? That's not possible. <laughs> See, this is a very gross misrepresentation of uh, the Vedic tradition because... What people think is that uh, God should be beyond emotions. Well, that's actually not the case because today I am going to give you so many references from the Bhagavad Gita which actually which actually emphasizes the power of emotion basically. Okay? And if you see our Vedic tradition, if you see the Shrutis, the Smritis, everywhere you will find loving interactions between God and his devotees. Okay. So if you read all the Puranas, the Upanishads, you will find there are like hundreds and thousands of examples that we can <clears throat> to prove that uh, the spirituality is not like a very dull and very boring thing which has no emotions in it. Okay, Many people think like this, but actually that's not the case because whenever you are talking of spiritual progress, it it, it simply means you are talking of getting closer to God. And because God is a person, so there are emotions involved with it. Okay, so, but why do people fear emotions? Because they think that, oh, yeah, you know, emotions give uh, pain and trouble always. So, therefore, whenever we become spiritual, we have to become emotionless, right? Well, that's not the case. So, for example, <clears throat> there's a famous story once there was a person. Uh, who wanted to take sannyas? Okay, now what is sannyas for the Western audience? Sannyas is basically renunciation from uh, the entire world, you know, seizing all your materialistic activities and uh, focusing fully on your spiritual life. So, there was one person, he had his wife, and somehow his wife died, and then he went to his guru, to his guru Maharaj, and he said, Gurudev, now I'm qualified to get sannyas. Please give me sannyas. Please award me with sannyas. I'm so desperate to become a sannyasi. And then the guru asked him, uh, well, uh, what makes you think that you are qualified for sannyas? Then he said, I am qualified because my wife died and I did not cry. I did not shed a single tear when my wife died. You know? uh, well, then when the guru heard this, he laughed and he said, Sannyas means that you should cry for the entire world by seeing the suffering of the living entities of the world, right? So if you cannot cry for one person, and that of your wife who has been uh, so intimately and closely linked with you, physically, mentally, spiritually, <clears throat> intellectually, emotionally, so then how in the universe will you cry for everybody else in the world? So you are not qualified to take sannyas. Okay? So therefore, many times people think, oh, emotions are bad. You know, Emotions are not bad. It is only bad when you are directing it to the wrong person. right? Because if there are no emotions, then there is no life. You, you are a dead. You're, you, don't, you, you are just existing. You don't live basically. Right? There is a difference between existing and living. And regarding the uh, stories in the Vedic tradition, there are like, as I said, you know, there are millions and billions and trillions of pastimes which you can quote. So, for example, why, 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 why only Shiva? Then you see Lord Ram's example. Uh, there are some questions raised about Lord Ram also, but we will tackle that some other time. But in context of emotion, you will see when the great Jatayu 
right? He was a great friend of his father, Dasharath Maharaj. When Jatayu uh, is about to die, about to go back to Vaikuntha, the spiritual world, when Lord Ram sees that this uh, Jatayu, he is lying with all the blood and you know, it's like a, such a ghastly scene where he was fighting against uh, the mighty Ravana to protect Sita Devi. And then uh, Ravana demolishes him and uh, he is on the verge of death when Lord Ram comes and meets him and in his last moments. So when Lord Ram comes and sees and Jatayu tells, you know, how bravely he fought against uh, Lord Ra, I mean, against Ravan to, you know, protect the honor of Sita Devi and to rescue her, you know, and then when Lord Ram hears all this, you know, he, he breaks into tears. It's like Ramayana explains, like he was, it, it is like he was weeping incessantly. There was no, there's no end to his tears, you know, because he was feeling uh, that uh, he was feeling so much love that this great devotee of mine to protect uh, Sita Devi, he has given up his entire life, you know, and, and he knew, Jatayu knew, Acharya has explained, Jatayu knew very well that he is no match to Ravan, but he imagine you know that you cannot defeat somebody, you know, and you know that if you challenge him, then it's not that you will be defeated, you will be dead, you know it. It's not a question of, you know, if, yes, no, maybe, but, maybe this, that, no. It's, it's not a question of ifs and buts. It's a question of certainty. It is unidirectional. You know that you are going to die. But imagine this person, he goes and challenges this mighty Ravan. And then he, he tries his best. Ravana is also bleeding. He's also injured. But then at the end, Jatayu leaves his body. He... He leaves this world. Lord Ram says that at this very moment, I will send you to the spiritual world of Vaikuntha. Now, that shows how intimately, you know, you, you talk of Hanumanji, for example, you know, whenever he used to do something, Herculean, whatever, what, what would be his word? You know, he would say, Jai Shri Ram, and he would jump, he would make the leap, right? Even when jumping uh, from Dhanush Kodi to Lanka, he made that great leap of 100 Yojana, saw Yojan do. But what did he say? Jai Shri Ram. Why did he say Jai Shri Ram? He could have said, oh, I don't need all this. You know, I, I can just be myself, right? <laughs> but he says this because out of his emotion, right? And any, anybody, you, you, you take any example, you, you show, you take the example of Shabri Devi from Ramayana, who was instructed by Matang Rishi, her spiritual master, uh, that one day God will come to you searching for somebody, right? <laughs> So, in this world, everybody goes to God. They are searching for God. You know, materialistic people are wanting to exploit God like an order supplier. And spiritual people are also searching, where is God? Where is God? We want to find you and meditate, this, that, blah, blah, blah. But you will be the only person, Shabri, where in this world for whom God himself will come searching for you. Okay. So, what she used to do? She used to... Every day uh, she would assume that yes, today Lord Ram and Lakshman will come and she would put beautiful flowers on the pathway and people would call her mad, insane, crazy. Oh, you old lady, you, you have lost your mind. Gone is your guru and gone is your ashram and forget that God is uh, ever going to come into your life. No, that's not happening. That's a pigment of your imagination. Okay. <clears throat> but no, she had this strong faith in the words of her Guru Maharaj. Yes, Guru Maharaj has said it has to be true. There is no other, there's no question of uh, that being uh, not true. Okay, And what happened? She would taste uh, all the uh, bear, as they say, you know, in um, in Hindi, uh, in India. I, I don't know what's the English translation for that. So it's like a small fruit, which she would taste herself first. And whichever fruit was sweet, only that she would keep aside for uh, Lord Ram. I mean, that, that is the love, uh, that is the extent of love and devotion. And when Lord Ram came, he accepted it. He didn't say, no, what nonsense is this? You know, you are, you are offering me your remnants. I mean, imagine when you go to temples, you know, there are such high standards, you know, like uh, Brahmins, they are offering food, you know, it's like cooked without onion, garlic, and, you know, it's very sattvic, and it's like you have to take bath. 
properly you have to do your gayatri you have to chant mantras then you have to offer you know it it's so complicated it's so uh, it it's such a high standard which is followed but imagine in case of shabri uh, you you are uh, you are offering your remnants you are offering your jutha but even then lord ram is accepting right <clears throat> even in the case of mahabharat if you come and see uh, arjuna why to go to anybody else let's talk of arjun here uh, arjuna heard the entire bhagavad gita right entire all all the shlokas he heard literally directly from lord krishna and nobody else but <clears throat> then what happened when abhimanyu died uh, when abhimanyu was brutally massacred you know it was like he was brutally killed by all these seven maharathis combined hmm? the kaurava dronacharya karna and all these then what happens when arjuna comes and he sees he is devastated and he cries yes he cries he can't believe it it's like he sees you know oh my my child you 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 fought so bravely and 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 he's and and you are no more now you can't believe it but then gradually he comes to his senses and he understands well this is the will of destiny that that is how it is to be but then arjuna does not say okay you know now my son is not there anymore why should i fight this war you know no then he takes a vow that till tomorrow sunset i will kill jayadrath you know unless he runs away from this battle okay or whatever <laughs> we can go into the details of the vow later some other time but arjuna cries now somebody can ask oh What, what is this? You know, he you just heard the Bhagavad Gita, right? Where Krishna told you, you are not this body, you are spirit soul after all, right? So why should you cry? Why should you waste your time, right? Well, that's not the case. Emotions are very important. If if there are no emotions, then well, um, there's no life basically. Either even if you are talking at a spiritual realm, there are emotions involved always, because the Shrimad Bhagavatam says. Living entities, uh, like you know, the uh, Vedanta Sutra says that Athato Brahma Jigya says you should always inquire about the uh, higher truths, the spiritual truth. But one of the uh, the main composition of the soul is Satchit Ananda, which means it is full of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. And the soul is conscious. So when somebody is conscious, then there are emotions. What? How can somebody be conscious if there are no emotions? Right? Um, that's not possible. So either you go at a mundane realm or you go at the spiritual realm. Even if you see the relationship between the guru and a disciple, there is emotions involved in it. It is not some dogmatic thing. Oh, guru is there, you know, he will say, and I will follow. No, it's not like that. There are emotions involved. The guru. Why is the guru taking care of the disciple out of compassion? There is compassion. There is love. There is sympathy, empathy, care, concern. All these things are there. Without this, you cannot have a spiritual experience. It's not possible. And there are so many people that I know. They say, "Oh, I go to this spiritual community, and you know, whatever, so and so, blah blah blah." But then they have, they don't have any connection with anybody. They don't have connection with their guru, with their, I mean, the shiksha guru, diksha guru, pat pradarshita guru. No, or with their god brothers, god sisters, or any seniors in the community, and then within no time they are not there in the community anymore. They 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 leave and they never return. Why? Because emotions are those uh, emotions represent that string which keeps you connected, you know, to each other. Otherwise, uh, what is it basically, right? So if you see Kunti Devi, you no, know, she is there in the Shrimad Bhagavatam, right? Kunti Devi offers prayers to Lord Krishna, right? Why does she do? Why, 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 why at all she does it? Because she is connected to Krishna emotionally, not because she is Lord Krishna's aunt. <laughs> That's not the reason. I mean, she is also she is connected bodily also uh, through that sense, but that, that that that's not how it is, right? Even at the end uh, of the war, Kurukshetra, when you see all the five sons of the Pandavas, you know, the children of Draupadi, they are again. Killed by Ashwatthama in the dead of the night when they were sleeping, right? <laughs> Because Ashwatthama thought they were the Pandavas. So when when you when you see that when you see imagine as a mother you have five children and you come and see you know all of them are slaughtered in one day how will you feel, right? But even within that, what what did Dwapadi say? You know, Dwapadi said, "Oh, I can feel the pain of a mother, so I think uh, you should uh, spare Ashwatthama or you know give him some punishment, but not kill him." This is what Dwapadi said, right? 
Uh, but anyways, so you have to understand that Lord Krishna himself emphasizes, you know, the power of emotions uh, and bhakti yoga especially. He he does it very well in the Bhagavad Gita. So I, I, I can give you more than 10 references, but due to the interest of time, uh, I have selected like six shlokas where he does it. Okay. So for example, if you go and read the Bhagavad Gita, you go to the... Uh, you go to any chapter, you let's go to the 18th chapter, right? So 18.54, 18th chapter, 54th sloka, where he says this. Brahma bhuta pasannatma naso chati na kankshati sama sarveshu bhuteshu mad bhaktim lavate parani. He says, one who is thus transcendentally situated at once realizes the supreme Brahman and becomes fully joyful. He never laments or desires to have anything. He is equally disposed towards living toward every living entity in that state he attains pure devotional service unto me mad bhakti lavate param that word bhakti is used here then 1868 yaidam paramam guhya mad bhakte shwabithasyati there also he says bhakti main param kritwa this is the this is the crux okay for one who explains this supreme secret to the devotees, pure devotional service is guaranteed and at the end he will come back to me. Again, Lord Krishna is emphasizing devotion here. 9.22 Ananyas chinta yanto maam ejana par yupasate tesham nityabhi yuktanam yoga kshemam maham yaham But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, Lord Krishna is saying, Meditating on my transcendental form. To them, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Yoga Kshemam Baham Yaham. Then 9.27. Yat Karoshi Yadash Nasi Yad Juhosi Dadasi Yat Yat Tapasya Se Kaunte Yat Tat Purushwama Darpanam. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. How can you offer something to somebody if you have no emotions? That's crazy, right? <clears throat> then 10.9. Machita magata prana bodhayanta parasparam kathayantascha maam nityam tushanti charamanticha. Look at what's written here. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service. And they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. They, they derive great satisfaction and bliss. How can a stone, this is a mobile, can it derive great satisfaction and bliss? No, right? You or me can. <laughs> then, of course, the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita. Sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshe shami ma sucha Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Ma suchaha. Do not fear. Lord Krishna is saying. Okay. So, as I said, I can go on and on. I can give you 100 references. And if I open the Srimad Bhagavatam with the 18,000 verses, you know, you, 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 you will... You will you will go crazy. You 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 take any canto. You take any pastime. You know. You take uh, the seventh canto, for example. You know, Prahlad Maharaj is there. Right, Prahlad Maharaj, when he was attacked by Hiranyakashipu all the time. You know, when he rebelled against his father, apparently. And then what happened? Recently, we celebrated Narsing Chaturdashi. Lord Narsing Dev appeared in this you know ferocious form and. Uh, he ripped apart Hiranyakashipu, right? His form was so beautiful and so ferocious at the same time, right? And then what happened? Why did he come? Why did he? Uh, why did he kill Hiranyakashipu? Why? Because he was a demon. Well, well uh, yes, but not necessarily. <laughs> but because he was tormenting this great devotee called Prahlad, right? So that is why um, Lord Narsing Dev appeared. That was actually the main reason. Okay. So, therefore, if somebody says, you know, that God doesn't have emotions or, you know, his devotees don't have emotions, well, then my question is, what in the universe, what the hell are you doing in spirituality? What, what are you doing exactly? I mean, you, you're just in illusion. You are in delusion, actually. Not, not even uh, in illusion. You are delusion to think that a spiritual life 
can go on without emotions. No, it is not possible. You will have emotions towards your, uh, your gurus, your god brothers, your god sisters, to, towards God at the ultimate level. You will have that. And when you have that, that same compassion and emotion and love and empathy will manifest towards all other living entities of this world in form of kindness, compassion, charity, you know, and concern, love. So that is how it happens. So Lord Shiva, he is crying. Yes, he's crying because he has emotions. <laughs> he's always meditating. He's in trance. Parvati Devi asks him, what are you meditating upon? Lord Shiva says, Shri Rama Rama Rame Te Rame Rame Mano Rame Sastanama Tattulyam Rama Nama Varanane. He says, I'm meditating on the name of Ram. Thousand names of Vishnu equals one name of Ram, O Rama Devi. <laughs> right? So why is why in the universe is he meditating? Why? 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 Because, because he has emotions. Yes. You see, Lord Krishna, all his pastimes, all filled with devotees, all filled with emotions. You will never find. Lord Krishna comes and protects Draupadi. Why? Oh, yeah, yeah, because I'm God, I have to do it right. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Draupadi is a very chaste lady, so it's my duty, right, to go and protect her. Well, uh, yes, but that's not the ultimate reason, right? <laughs> so, therefore, you take anybody, you take Lord Ram, you take Lord Krishna, you take Lord Shiva, you take Lord Narsimadev, anybody you take, you know, in anybody, there are emotions involved, and that is how the spiritual world functions. It functions on bhav, which is you know, like uh, the highest stage uh, of like bhakti. It's like the last second, last uh, second uh, topmost stage, and then there is prema, which is actually love, which is you know, like intoxication, madness. Okay, it's, it's like craziness, you craziness in a good sense. Okay, so therefore. All the uh, spiritual personalities, uh, all the avatars of God, and everybody have exemplified this. So just because they have emotion, it doesn't mean they are useless, worthless, or they are not godly. Okay, it doesn't mean that. Okay, and even for Krishna, you know, he uh, when Indra came and decimated the entire uh, Vrindavan by you know, pouring torrential rains, and what did Lord Krishna do? Out of his compassion, he picked up the Govardhan Parvat. In his finger, right? Why did he do it? Out of compassion. I mean, for God's sake, he has compassion. That is why he did it, right? Otherwise, why would he do? And and he also has love. It's not just compassion. Okay. So therefore, anybody you see, Lakshman, you know, he dedicated his life to Lord Ram. Why? Because there's emotion involved. Hanuman. Why did he dedicate? Because he, he has emotions involved, right? Sugriv, Angad, Nal, Neel, Jambavan, you Vibhishan, right? He gave all good counsel to Ravana and then Ravana kicked him out. Yes, but even then he had emotions. Okay, So therefore, anybody and everybody has emotions and emotions also exist in the spiritual realm. So if somebody says that there should be no emotions in spiritual life, then please send them the link of these six shlokas. And either they will understand what you are saying or they will never show their face to you again. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. And Jai Shri Ram. <laughs>